It is certainly my pleasure to be here with you. I wish I would have gotten here 10 minutes earlier because the food looks fantastic. I am uh, very grateful uh, for all of you coming out today to learn about two incredibly important topics, hospice care and the Affordable Care Act. I want to thank um, my city councilwoman, Councilwoman Sharon Green Middleton, for, for being here. Uh, she, she stopped me on the way in to tell me how much she's already gotten out of uh, the presentations today and, and I mentioned to her because we, she represents a district that I, I formerly represented on the council and I said, you know, we know that this is such an important issue in, in Northwest Baltimore and her, her district, so I'm very grateful that you are here on behalf of uh, your constituents, but also on behalf of the council and I hope that you take this information back to uh, the other members. So, I am, I don't, where is, do I see Secretary Lala? Is she, all right. So let me begin by um, inviting someone to the podium who plays a key role in, in improving the lives of older adults and people with disabilities, not just in the city of Baltimore, but across the state of Maryland. A mother to three, a grandmother to six, even though she doesn't look like a grandmother, not any grandmothers I'm used to. Uh, Secretary Glo Gloria Lawler has served as Maryland's Secretary of Aging since 2007. She is a strong and successful advocate for the rights of older adults with disabilities, and I would love to um, give this proclamation to the Secretary. It is a, come on up here. It is a certificate of recognition on behalf of the citizens of Baltimore. I am pleased to present this certificate to Gloria Lawler, Lala, excuse me, in recognition of your election as president to the National Association of United States for Aging and Disabilities. Thank you for your commitment to improving the lives of Baltimore City's ad adults with disabilities. Therefore, I have signed and issued this certificate as an earnest expression of my appreciation for your service. God bless you. Continue the good Thank work. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. I want to say thank you not only to the mayor and certainly the city council members, but to the Baltimore City Health Department, which is leading this. And I can't speak enough of your AAA director, Arnold Eppel, who has just done an outstanding job. We want I knew he would. I knew when he came in, I said, OK, you're going to be good for Baltimore City. You've got a wonderful, wonderful opportunity to serve. I just want to say one thing to you, Madam Mayor on hospice. I'm from the great state of South Carolina. Yes, yes, great state of South Carolina. You know, when I was in South Carolina as a young, young, young girl back in the old days, my sister and others were born in the household. They were actually born in mother's bedroom by the midwife. The midwife delivered the babies in the bedroom, okay? And so we came out of a very, in fact, many communities in South Carolina did not have a doctor. And in those days, it had to be a, a black doctor coming in that would serve those who could not pay, because they paid with chickens and vegetables and out of the garden and fruit. So hospice is a wonderful opportunity for us, but I'm reminding us where we came from and what we were accustomed to. In fact, my father's first wife's body was in the coffin in the living room of our house. He told me about that. Now, you are kind of young looking out in this audience, but uh, actually the bodies were placed in the coffins in the living rooms of the homes. So I, I want to remind us, of, Madam Mayor, where we've come. This is part of our history. And so now we have a great opportunity here. I didn't know about hospice until I came here to the great state of Maryland. And so this is a wonderful, wonderful opportunity for a service. And, and you, are the, you are the leaders of the community that can take that word back to your congregations, your friends, your clubs, your communities. And we can talk about it. But just don't forget where we came from. We understand who we are. We understand our long traditions. And we understand why. 
Thank you so much, Madam Mayor, for this honor today, and thank you for giving me an opportunity to come out and join you to talk about this important issue. God bless. And I forgot to uh, thank Dr. John Lund, President of the Baptist Ministers Conference, for being here, and, and all of you. And I want to thank my, my former neighbor, Weptonoma, for, for being our keynote. Thank you very much. It's always a pleasure to see you. All righty. Let me get back on track before I start talking about something else I'm not supposed to be talking. All right, here we go. So this morning, you heard from my health commissioner, Dr. Barbeau, about the importance of hospice services and the Affordable Care Act. And I want to add a few additional thoughts for you this afternoon. In Baltimore, we are not utilizing hospice services nearly as often as residents are in other cities across, uh, other cities or counties across the state of Maryland. And that's a shame because hospice provides a much needed and very valuable service to individuals who are in the last stages of life. African Americans are less likely to use hospice services than Caucasian Americans. And some of the reasons for African Americans' lack of hospice usage are lack of knowledge about the services that are offered, and most of all, economics. So that's where you come in. Uh, please take the message, just as Secretary Lala said, please take the message you are hearing today back to your churches and explain to your congregants the facts about hospice services and how they can benefit them. Emphasize that individuals can remain in their homes with their families and still receive hospice services. I urge you to talk to your congregations about the Affordable Care Act and health insurance. More than 80,000 of our residents don't have one of the most basic protections they can have, and that's health insurance. That's more than 13% of our brothers and sisters who are making doctor's appointments or uh, getting preventive care or seeing a doctor if they're sick. Um, with an, or sick or have an emergency, it's, it's not possible for them. So please talk to your congregants and encourage them to reach out to the healthcare access of Maryland to get enrolled in, in coverage. It's so very important. I would hate to think of individuals that, that need this, uh, need coverage that aren't getting it because they just don't know about it. Uh, and that's where we have, I think, a responsibility because now we know. And now that we know, we have to tell somebody else. Uh, whatever your thoughts may be about the news coverage, about the website, I hope that we can put them aside and get to the basics, which is our people need health coverage. Uh, this, it, it frustrates me so to, to know about the, the uh, mortality rate of so many of people in our community because of lack of access to information. When we think about the fact that African American women don't, uh, aren't diagnosed with breast cancer any more than any other population, but they are dying at a rate over 40 times as much, 40% as much as the majority population. Why? Because you know how we do, women, ladies, my sisters out there, we put ourselves last. We want to take care of everybody else, and what we don't know is what we are teaching the sisters that are coming behind us, which is to do the exact same thing. We have to break that cycle. We have to say that it is okay. It is the, the dignified and responsible thing to do to take care of yourself. It's not selfish. It is, I, I think, it is the, the, the best lesson that we could teach to those who use us as role models, that we have to take care of ourselves. Because what happens? We can talk about it, but if we're talking about it and people don't see us walking that walk, it, we might, it, they're empty words. People have to see that it is okay to take care of yourself in our community. That it's okay to ask, do you have a primary care physician? Are you getting your checkups? And if you think something is wrong with someone, it's okay to ask the question. You're not trying to get in somebody's business, you're being a caring sister to people in our community. So my hope is that we'll use that, just as the, the Secretary said, we know where we come from. We came from a community that was unashamed and, and um, 
unwilling to let others, you know, be vulnerable without saying something. You know, a lot of the care that, that the secretary talked about, we pulled together and did for each other, not because, I mean, yes, we didn't, we didn't have a lot of options, but we knew it needed to be done. So we figured out a way to stand in the gap and provide those services that needed to happen. So I am, hope, I am hopeful that uh, we continue to work very hard. Uh, you know, the, like I said, the, the health care reform is bigger than this website. You know, I know that you remember the Medicare Part D under the Bush administration. That was a rocky rollout too, but you know, it worked. And there was nobody talking about recalling it or, you know, or firing somebody because of it. They understand that when you, when you make major changes, there's no way to make the type of change that our president is trying to do without having glitches. So you deal with them and you move on because you, ha you cannot forget the underlying efforts, the underlying work, and that is to make sure that more people have access to better health care. So, you know, there are other ways in just the website to learn about the Affordable Care Act, and I know that we're, you've talked about some of those today. There are plans available for everyone and, and many ways to learn about them, and I encourage you to invite HCAM to your uh, church for an enrollment e event. They can be very helpful. Again, I, I really believe that we can make our city a healthier city uh, together. I am so determined uh, to have lasting impact on the health outcomes for our neighborhoods. We should not have life expectancies of more than, you know, of almost 20 years from one zip code to the next, from one neighborhood to the next. When we can see in Baltimore skyline the best hospital in the world. We should not have these health disparities. So my hope is as you know as we are winding down on 2013 and everybody's gearing up for their yearly resolutions. I call them my month resolutions because they usually only last till the end of January, but we can try. But as you are doing this, please think about making the pledge to your health and to be an uh, advocate for the, the health of your communities. I think we could do so much better for one another if we really put health at the forefront. So again, thank you for being here, for getting this information, and for your commitment to sharing it with your community. Thank you very much. God bless.